And the reason we record them is because everyone's not always able to make meetings on time, but uh, NDOT posts these meetings. We save them, post them on the website. So um, your neighbors, if they're missing this meeting, can um, catch catch it there and catch up with the project. So um, to start off, my name's Amy Birch. I'm a traffic engineer and consultant that works with NDOT to uh, help facilitate this uh, neighborhood street traffic calming program. And we're here with you tonight to talk to you about the traffic calming project on Tyler Drive. So thanks, thank you all for joining. Um, also on the call with me is Ellie Finn from the um, uh, team, traffic calming team, and she's going to be helping me monitor the chat box. So uh, if you have questions as we go along, Feel free to put those in the chat box, or you can unmute yourself and ask those, and we can have that discussion. But if you'd like to use the chat box, we will be monitoring it uh, and answering those questions as we move along. So thank you all. Um, let's get going on this. Um, so I'm sure you're interested to see the see the um, the proposal we have, but we're going to first start with some background information about traffic calming and the program, and then we'll um, talk about our toolbox and then our um, proposal and next steps um, for, for Tyler Drive. So what is traffic calming? Let's start with some basics. The Neighborhood Street Traffic Calming Program focuses on residential streets. So it's streets like Tyler Drive. It's not streets like Lebanon Pike. Um, but it's a program that we use to install physical solutions usually to encourage slower uh, speeds over the length of the street. So we're really targeting speed reduction with this program. The three E's of traffic calming, education, enforcement, and engineering education, we um, we do through these meetings and through other, other ways to educate the public on the importance of driving slow, especially on residential streets. Uh, enforcement, that's the job that the police department does, but we recognize that the police department cannot monitor all streets 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, so traffic calming also addresses the engineering of the street, the modification of the street design to physically uh, and um, behaviorally uh, change drivers' uh, behaviors on the street um, to encourage slower speeds. And this slide is uh, really kind of showing our why. Why do we do this? Why do we want slower speeds on uh, streets? It's because there's a direct correlation between um, uh, vehicle speed and survivability. So in this um, graphic, we're showing a pedestrian's ability to survive if they're struck by a vehicle and at, at various speeds. So at 25 miles per hour, um, a pedestrian's chance of survival is 89%. And then if the vehicle speed is go goes up to 35 miles per hour, that chance of survival goes down to 68%. And then at 45 miles per hour, that uh, survival rate goes down to 35%. So, um, you know, speed is is directly related to severity of, of crash, and we know this. Um, so we're really trying to encourage those slower speeds. Also, crashes are more easily avoided altogether if drivers are um, going a slower speed. This program is very, um, very uh, popular. And uh, we're just showing here um, the the popularity of it, and the pink lines on this map are are streets that have applied for traffic calming. Um, and as of this selection um, that Tyler Drive was selected with, we had over 500 neighborhood streets in Nashville that had requested traffic calming, and uh, this street was selected um, through the process that uh, we announced in the summer with 85 neighborhood streets. And this was a larger selection than uh, the typical um, number of streets that are selected uh, by NDOT every year because there was surplus budgeting budget that was allocated to this program. Um, and, and therefore, instead of announcing 25 streets at that time, uh, it was 85 streets. So we um, were working with a, a larger uh, bunch in this group, but this is just to show you that we have um, a lot of demand, but based on the data that uh, we have, Tyler, Tyler Drive was selected. 
for traffic calming. So outside of the neighborhood street traffic calming program, um, if you have other needs or services from um, uh, Metro, there are other ways to reach the departments, various departments through Hub Nashville. If you're not familiar with Hub Nashville, um, we have the info here on how to get a hold of that. Call 311 or hub.nashville.gov. There's also an app that you can download onto your smartphone. Um, but this is a great tool that Metro offers in order for um, constituents, residents to um, uh, find information or make requests for things like a sign has been knocked down or a uh, street light is out and the or the um, the storm grate is clogged and it's causing flooding in your yard something like that. Um, it what the hub does is takes these service requests and gets them to the right department, the right person to get the get it resolved or get an answer to your request. So I always like to plug the hub because it's just a great tool and resource. So back to traffic calming, um, I mentioned that uh, Tyler Drive was selected and, and it was selected based on this uh, prioritization process that the program, NDOT's program uses and it's data driven. We look at uh, five main criteria and those are weighted um, as shown in that pie chart to the right. But um, we, all the streets that apply for traffic calming um, that we have, we go out and collect this data on those streets. So we collect the vehicular speed and volume. And so the speed is valued at 45% of the total score out of 100. Then we look at also compare volume and that uh, is allocated to us 25%. Uh, we also look at neighborhood destinations. So are there uh, community centers or parks or schools or libraries close to the street where we would expect pedestrians to be wanting to walk to and from that street to those destinations. Um, we also look at the street's non-driver accommodations, whether there are sidewalks or not. Um, presence of bikeways and greenways, bus routes, bus stops nearby that would encourage people to be walking and, and um, going to and from. And then we also look at crash data uh, for pedestrians um, and whether or not there have been any pedestrian crashes or fatalities on the street within the 10-year uh, period. And so all the streets that apply for traffic calming, um, we have this data and, and it goes through this prioritization. And those that scored at the top are the ones that are, are selected based on the amount of budget that's allocated to that. Um, selection period. So that's how Tyler Drive was selected. And so um, I want to show you some of the data that we look at and collected on um, Tyler Drive. Our segment is the whole street between Lebanon Pike and Andrew Jackson Parkway. And so I'm showing here the 85th percentile speed was measured at 35 miles per hour where the posted speed limit is 30 miles per hour. There's also a school zone on the street. Um, but the 85th percentile speed is a measurement that we traffic engineers often reference, um, but it essentially means that 85% of the traffic um, over the course of the day was going that speed or below. So on the flip side, that means that 15% of the traffic is actually going above 35 miles per hour on Tyler Drive. Um, so it, it does look like a, a fair amount of speeding going on. And then the daily uh, traffic volume, that's the uh, both directions of travel. Uh, it's just under 3,000 vehicles per day. Then we also look at, you know, what are the characteristics of um, the street? How wide is it? It's about 28 to 30 feet wide, and it's got some center line striping. There is a narrow sidewalk on one side of the street, um, and this street is, is considered a collector avenue, according to um, uh, Metro's uh, street classification, which means it's collecting um, uh, traffic volume from, from smaller streets and, and carrying it out to those uh, larger streets like Lebanon Pike and, and um, Andrew Jackson Parkway. So we always like to show you a little bit of the, that data and how we got here. Um, 
And here's a map uh, showing our study area and limits of the project. So I've highlighted uh, in green, or it has the green line here on Tyler Drive showing um, our extents. And as you know, uh, you have two schools on this street and it, it just connects these two major more or higher classification streets on Lebanon Pike. Um, so where we are here in this um, phase of the project is in the meeting and design phase, and that's what it's showing in our legend here to the right. This map is pulled directly from NDOT's traffic calming um, website and uh, online tracker map where we track all of our um, all of our streets that are in the program. And then I've also called out here um, some additional information about this area, uh, both Tyler Drive and um, and Terry Lane were were identified for additional projects and, and traffic calming for um, the participatory budget uh, that was recently announced. So we will be uh, in that will be working with Terry Lane as well. Um, regarding that project um, for traffic calming. But uh, right now we're just talking about the, the plan for Tyler Drive. I just wanted to point that out to you all. Um, so now we're gonna talk about our um, toolkit. What do we use to um, encourage these slower speeds on residential streets? Our, our main tool that we use um, for a number of reasons is speed cushions. Um, they are extremely effective. Um, for the most part, um, residents and neighbors really, really like them. That's what they're kind of asking for in tra in uh, for traffic calming when they ask for traffic calming on their street. This is what they're thinking of usually. So these are um, devices that are drilled into the pavement and installed in their vertical devices. So um, they uh, get drivers to slow down as they approach and, and drive over the um, they're, they're kind of like speed humps, if you will, but they're cushions. The defining characteristic of the cushions is that it has these gaps, as you see in these pictures, that um, better allow for emergency vehicle response uh, to not have as much impact. Um, when we are installing these, we have a, a, a number of ways we can configure them based on the width of the street, what the striping pattern on the street is, um, what the uh, volume of the street is, and um, and so you can see we might put them in in a, a set of three, or we might put them in a set of two, like that picture in the top left. We always pair them with either a sign right at the device, um, saying speed cushions, or we might put the sign in advance of a series of speed cushions. Um, and then when we do install these. Um, speed cushion sets, we will put them in a series because we know if we just put one in the middle of a street, we're just going to um, get uh, drivers will, many drivers will continue to speed as they had before and then maybe slow down fast at the device and then carry on uh, if they don't see any others uh, in front of them. So we'll put them in, in a series typically spaced in in 400, 500 foot spacing so that uh, we get a consistent vehicle speed across the length of the street. We may incorporate uh, on some streets where bike lanes might be present, we might incorporate the use of those uh, white uh, flexible delineator posts that you see in the picture on the bottom right. And then the picture on the bottom left is kind of showing a profile view of a 10 and a half foot long speed cushion. That's the the stand typical one we we will install, um, but the so there you can see in that picture hopefully that there's they're modular so um, the they kind of ramp up on one end and then the this ten and a half foot one is um, is flat on top and then it ramps down um, and they'll have pavement markings on them that's also reflective. Speed tables are uh, rubberized and uh, so made of the same material as the speed cushions, but the difference is they go uh, fully across the, uh, the width of the street and they um, they are flat on top and usually longer. 
We don't use these as often as we do the speed cushions because uh, the speed cushions better accommodate those emergency vehicles. So in Nashville, um, NDOT has done some before and after studies on locations where these speed cushion devices have been installed. And so we just wanted to show um, what the local impact is uh, where these, these before and after studies have been done. The graph on the left is showing a comparison of the average speed before and after cushions were installed. And um, so before it was 31 miles per hour, the average was 31 miles per hour. And then after that uh, average across these studies went down to 22 miles per hour. Um, and then the graph on the right is the 85th percentile speed that we talked about earlier. Um, and so the 85th percentile speed before was 37 miles per hour, and it went down to uh, 25 miles per hour after uh, the speed cushions were installed. So we, we look at this data and we, we see that these are effective in um, helping us reach those goals of slower speeds, that 25 mile per hour target. So um, another tool that we have in our toolbox are radar feedback signs. These are um, signs that are typically posted with the posted speed limit, like you see in these pictures, um, but they are um, usually solar and will show a vehicle speed to them as they approach um, the sign and flash the speed if um, going above the posted speed limit. Similarly, um, the before and after studies have shown uh, success with these as well, um, uh, with the average speed reduction of six miles per hour and uh, seven mile per hour reduction uh, for the 85th percentile speed. So these are um, you know, quick installations that do um, have uh, lasting effects. Uh, is what the data has shown us here and where we've installed those in, in Nashville. And we'll typically use these on streets that we can't install the vertical devices um, for reasons because there may be vertical grade or horizontal grade or something like that that prevents us from being able to install the cushions or if they're not desired by the community, if cushions are not desired. Um, other tools um, we might, might incorporate are narrowing when we have a wider street that has excess pavement that's not needed. Um, we can uh, apply these white edge lines, as you see in the picture on the left and on the right, um, to narrow that pavement width and make the uh, driver feel more constrained as they drive through the street. Another tool that we use uh, in more Urban areas are um, bulb outs and chicanes where we'll narrow the pavement at intersections using the striping and flexible delineator post, which narrows uh, crossing distances for pedestrians at crosswalks um, and can also uh, delineate where the parking, where on street parking can occur. Um, so that's the bulb out on the left. And then on the right, these are pictures of chicanes, which essentially is um, adding curvature, horizontal curvature to an otherwise straight street through the use of um, pavement markings or alternating the side of the street that the parking is on, like you see in these pictures. So the parking kind of goes side to side um, and, the, and the pavement markings will, will um, sort of zigzag through the street and so implementing that horizontal deflection um, can can slow driver speeds. But both of these, you know, we have to have kind of the right um, existing conditions in order to incorporate something like this type of design. Um, then on traffic circles, we um, will uh, install, like as shown in this picture, a circular um, island in the center of an intersection. These are intersection treatments, um, and they operate similar to a roundabout in that vehicles um, travel counterclockwise around the around the circle through the intersection. But that um, that island creates a 
horizontal deflection for vehicles passing through the intersection and um, slows people down at the intersection. These are um, devices that we don't use quite uh, as often as the as often as the cushions at all, um, because we really need the right um, existing conditions to install one of these type of circles. Um, but we do have it in our toolbox and we like to talk about it. So now I'm going to talk about our um, proposal for Tyler Drive. Um, just to orient you, uh, the pink line is Tyler Drive. So Lebanon Pike is over to the left of your screen and Andrew Jackson to the right. And then we have DuPont um, Tyler Middle School and Tulip Grove Elementary School um, shown on the map as well. So what we have um, been looking at the characters of, of the street, um, we've uh, identified that speed cushions could be installed on Tyler Drive. And so we're showing just a concept level plan here for you um, that shows six sets of cushions uh, along the length of the street. And based on those, the width, uh, it would probably be um, sets of three, like you see in the picture to the top, at, at the top left. And these are spaced roughly 400 feet apart, which is kind of our uh, sweet spot on um, on um, speed cushion installations. And I do want to point out that when we install these, we are we're looking at a number of um, things. Or when we lay out the design, we're looking at um, where street intersections are. We're looking at driveway locations because we don't want to place the cushions too close to a driveway or or within that driveway envelope um, and not too close to intersections. Um, so those those things go into our uh, decision making in laying out this plan. We also need to avoid um, steep grade over eight percent of of grade and hills and and curvature. So uh, we're all we're looking at all of that as we lay out this. Um, this design. I think I will pause there and see if there are any questions. Uh, let's see. I see that um, there is uh, um, opposition to the speed cushions. House faces uh, Tyler and drive, you must drive the street. We understand that that um, that that may may be the case um, that some some people may not um, feel the same way about uh, speed cushions. But thank you for your input. Are there any other questions about the plan? Yes. I mean, so I have noticed in the communities that have the speed cushions, um, our street, as you previously mentioned, has one side with sidewalks, then the other side. Those streets, people have a tendency that don't have the sidewalk to go around down into in front of those folks's. In their yards, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, what can you do to prevent that? Absolutely, that's a, a great uh, question. We will often, and and we, we kind of do this as as um, standard now because we have noticed that and and heard and seen that that does happen in cases where people will drive in in a yard to avoid the speed cushion. Um, that we'll put the that warning sign. It's not shown in this picture, but the um, the yellow warning sign that says speed cushions and has an advisory speed on it. We will put that right next to the cushion so that that acts as sort of like a bollard or a deterrent from going around it. Um, it's not as important on streets that have curb or sidewalk, um, but that's that's kind of that goes into how we lay it out. Um, when, when there's not sidewalk present or curb. So, with that being said, um, you know, we have a lot of emergency vehicles coming up and down our street along with buses. 
So having an elderly mother and them coming in an ambulance instead of pulling in the driveway where one of these signs might be, they pull on the street. So how's that going to work? Um, you're saying in, instead of pulling in a driveway, they would park on the yeah. street? Yeah, they pull the emergency vehicle in on the street and walk around down the driveway. So if you've got a sign there by the cushion mm -hmm. next to the street, then um, how's that going to work? when I need to call an emergency vehicle because I have yet to have one, an ambulance pull in the driveway. Sure, sure. So they'll they'll stay on the street, um, but the ambulance and the fire trucks are able to straddle these um, devices, the speed cushions. Um, and so the I, I don't I don't see how the sign there. They're going to typically stay on the street and not pull into a yard. Yeah, if, if that answers your question. Yeah, I guess you would have to see it to visualize it. Right, so they may. Um, just stay on on the street in the lane and other vehicles as they're stopped to take care of the emergency would would drive around. Um, we have another question in the chat box. Is the fire department able and willing to drive over these? They come through multiple times per day on their way to Lebanon Pike. Yes, yes, the fire department is aware of um, the program and they, they navigate over them. And uh, the same is true for school buses. I think um, that was mentioned about school buses. Yes, they are able to drive over them as well. And we go, we, we've installed these on uh, bus routes, school, school bus routes as well. Any other questions about the plan? So I'll talk about our project uh, flow chart. Um, so like we said, this street was uh, applied for traffic calming um, and where we are now, we went through the prioritization selection and where we are now is at our meeting where we are um, talking with the neighborhood about what the proposed uh, plan is for traffic calming and um, listen to feedback um, to see if there's modifications that we need to make to the plan. Um, and then from here, we will uh, do a more detailed plan that shows uh, more zoomed in the, and the device and, and how it lays out in the street. Um, we'll be able to identify, you know, the spacing uh, more accurately um, as well as, you know, distance from uh, driveways and things like that. Um, so we'll do that. We'll put together the more detailed plan. And then um, because this is a um, this is adjacent to and going along with um, another traffic calming project that's going to be coming for Terry Lane through the um, the participatory budget budgeting process. Um, we will be having a second meeting about this and we'll probably talk about those two streets together um, just as a, you know, a, another opportunity to to get get feedback and, and information to the community. And so we'll advertise that meeting um, with the uh, similar same uh, postcards that you got uh, for this meeting. 
and then um, we'll present that final concept and incorporate the other uh, details of, of Terry Lane and um, and then we'll talk about the next steps. But uh, these two projects were allocated uh, for participatory budget. So, um, you know, they will go then from from that phase into the construction phase. And um, this program off uh, usually has a balloting and voting phase, but NDOT doesn't do that um, for the participatory budget projects because it's sort of already been voted on. Um, and so it's not um, added any time further time to the project. Then we just move it into the construction phase after um, we've sort of finalized the, the plan and presented that to the community. Hey, Amy, looks like we have another question in the chat. Um, Mike is asking, is it a foregone conclusion that the speed cushions are the only option being considered? They're not hearing anybody say they want them. Are other parts of the toolkit still on the table? Um, yes, they are on the table. Um, so we can, um, we can, uh, certainly make some adjustments to the plan that is less um, intrusive. We can uh, talk with um, the council member about that as well. But um, typically these um, projects uh, for the participatory budget um, have traffic calm, when they have traffic calming, we incorporate the speed cushions. But if that's not something that the community is asking for um, at this time, we could uh, look at doing something that's uh, less intrusive, like the markings and signs. So we would probably we could what? Um, let me go. I'm going to go back to the layout here. Um, um, this will this will be something we'll vet out, but um, we we may still and incorporate uh, some cushions more closer to the school in the school, more defined school zone area, and then um, do the radar feedback signs on the other ends of the street. Um, and if there's some additional markings that we can incorporate, uh, we, we can look at adding that as well. So we have a question, would it be possible to start with the solar speed signs? Um, Yes, except that I would say um, the start with is uh, um, we're not necessarily doing a, a less intrusive measure and then coming back and, and measuring and seeing if that's doing enough and then come back and do cushions if it's not. Um, however, there could be uh, a an additional request for traffic calming that may come later if we went with just the solar uh, feedback signs. Um, and if that wasn't, um, you know, sufficient enough, the neighborhood wanted traffic calming, we could reevaluate it, but it would have to be selected again, meaning, you know, the, the speeds and all the data would have to um, get it to the top of that um, prioritization pile again. Um, so I, I would just say that, uh, that we might, Come back to you because I said we were going to have a second meeting that would incorporate Terry Lane. We might we could um, kind of refine this plan that might incorporate more radar feedback signs. Maybe um, still uh, keep the cushions around and close to the school to really uh, focus that slower speed through that zone, um, and and have fewer cushions on the rest of the street. If that's um, what I'm hearing from the from the neighborhood. Sounds like yes, uh, we have agreement that uh, this they would like the signs. Speed signs are a better option for our neighborhood is what's said here in the chat box. So, um, and that's why we do these meetings so that we can get some feedback from the neighborhood uh, and the people that live directly on the street um, and are most affected by this um i'll i'll say that for the most part um speed cushions are 
where speed cushions are installed, we do have a lot of uh, favorable uh, feedback from those that um, that they're doing their job and, and people are, are, are liking them on their streets. But we are certainly open and understanding that um, this is uh, the street that you live on and you, you have a certain perspective about the street. So. Um, I'm going to, I'm putting my contact information here and then, um, so if you have any further questions, feel free to reach out. This is also has, uh, in dot traffic calming email address in dot traffic calming at Nashville.gov. And again, I'm Amy Birch, Amy Birch at Birch transportation.com. Um, and then. Just to reiterate, what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to refine this plan based on the feedback that I've heard, uh, which is that there's not a strong desire for the speed cushions. Um, and maybe we could uh, use some more lower intrusive options. And I see council member has a hand up, so I'm going to give you the floor. Hey, Amy, just a quick question. If the speed signs were hypothetically installed what's the process for reevaluating if uh, the speeds have been reduced is there a review process what's that look like so we have such a demand for this program that we're not um necessarily going out and doing before after studies for every street we've done um a sampling and to to understand how well the um the, the, these devices work um, to confirm that they're useful and should be in the toolbox. But if there's a request for a before after study, we can, um, the department can do that. If there's a request for more traffic calming um, beyond what plan has been designed and, and installed, then um, that would be more of a, uh, a new application um, a resident. Uh, homeowner need to apply for the uh, traffic calming program again and we would do that um, analysis to determine whether it's selected or not for the program to consider traffic calming in the future or additional measures got it okay thank you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um is is the are the um, attendees on the call or are you all open to some cushions at or near the school to um, to physically reduce those speeds in that area um, and then use the signage on the on the ends? Does that sound like a reasonable um, kind of um, option or solution looks like we've got one yes in the chat Open Great. to it good so um what you'll be getting uh will be you know in, in a few weeks we'll be reaching out again um to incorporate the T terry lane um part of the uh project and so we'll just kind of Put all put this together. This project was already in the in moving forward before the participatory budget uh, was announced and identified, and so we um, we um, will bring that together, present the plan uh, more uh, again with you all. Uh, so you'll get those meeting advertisements similar to the ones you got um, for this meeting. And um, we'll, you'll, there'll be a link um, as well. So that information will be shared so you can participate in um, another meeting. Okay, I uh, see uh, the additional comment that um, does not desire any speed cushions, but if only around the school um, would be an improvement if that is the only option. So understood. 
Understood. We will um, retool the plan and and bring it back to to share with you all um, before it moves forward into the next phase of um, towards construction. I appreciate the participation. Um, we have linked to our uh, traffic calming. Um, website trafficcalming.nashville.gov. That is where information about the program uh, is there. Um, the final plans, um, when those get uh, finalized, they get posted online as well. Um, there's our map that shows the status of all the projects, uh, streets we're working on with traffic calming, um, things like that. So. Uh, inf more information about our toolbox. Um, so feel free to check all that out. Um, and if there's no other questions or council member, if you have anything else. We'll... No, no, all good. Okay, we'll, well, we'll, next steps. we'll touch base with you about, um, you know, next meetings and so forth. So. Um, thank you all for participating and giving us your feedback. It's really important for us to um, get that so that we um, get the plan that is most desired. Thanks, Amy, for facilitating. You bet. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.